The very first astrophoto that you should take is the very easiest astrophoto that can be taken. And it requires the absolute least amount of equipment. Really no equipment whatsoever except for a camera and a lens. And yes, no matter where you live, no matter how light polluted your skies are, you can take this photo. And I'll show you how. Now, if you're using some other brand of equipment, maybe you're actually advanced in astrophotography already, and you kind of want to start adding star trails to your portfolio. Folks, using one of these cameras is so easy. It's really almost worth it to just go out and actually buy a used one for like around two or 300 bucks. You can get the EM10s very cheap, and they come with this feature built in. That's how easy it makes doing star trails. I've seen guys talk about how they do it with other brands of cameras, and it sounds like a nightmare, all right? But yeah, it's super easy. Now, earlier I said that you don't even need a tripod to do this, and it's really true, you don't. Basically, if you just kind of prop the camera up at the sky and you can at least make your composition, you can do this feature. So yeah, no tripod necessary, but a tripod does make life a little bit easier and it is going to give you some freedom with composition. To begin, first, we're going to rotate our selector dial to the bulb setting. Now, this bulb setting is found on the EM1 Mark III, the EM1X, and also the OM1. If you have an older camera, however, these cameras don't have a bulb setting, you're going to want to select the manual. And from there, you're basically going to go rotate, you're going to rotate the shutter selection dial until you go past lot bulb, live time, and we're into live comp. Now here with the OM1, I'm going to switch it to bulb, and you're going to see right away that the screen does get darker because they're assuming that you're doing this in the dark. When you first set the selector dial to bulb, it's going to show bulb right down here. And it also indicates the rear selector dial is what's going to change these options. So we're going to go past bulb into live comp. And it will actually even give you written instructions on the screen on what to do next. You're going to press the button once to prepare the composite shooting, then you'll press it again to actually start it, and then after that you press it one third time in order to end the sequence. Now, there actually are some options though. If we hit the menu button, in this menu option here, control how long each of the frames are that we stack together in the camera because the camera is going to take multiple images and it will stack them for you. You don't have to do any of the stacking afterwards in post. And on top of that, there's no gaps between each frame, which is great because then you don't get any gaps between the stars. This is a problem that is often a major issue for people with other brands of cameras is that you can't get rid of that little gap between each frame. With an OM-1 or any OMD camera, Using live comp, there are no gaps between your stars. Now I am gonna set it for half a second just for the case here, but typically I do 60 seconds. Now, what shutter speed length you choose is actually going to be dependent on how bright your circumstances are. The longer this number is, obviously the brighter your scene's going to get. And you can also vary your ISO, so we can actually hit menu again here and come in here and we can change our ISO to a number of different things. Now with older cameras, the OMD line, you were limited to ISO 1600, but with the OM1, we can go, I think it's, let's see your ISO, ISO 6400 is as high as you can go. And actually you can feel good about pushing the ISO limit of this feature because it is a pretty well thought out and the noise reduction process here is very, very good. And that's because live comp will actually take a dark frame in the beginning of the exposure sequence. See, it already took a dark frame. Now it's telling me to press and begin the sequence. So now it's gonna just start stacking images one after another. And as you can see, we're kind of underexposed in this particular sequence. We could actually go back here. We're gonna hit the shutter button once more. It actually takes another dark frame at the end of the sequence and then puts it all together. Well, here, let's go in here. Let's increase exposure time. Let's say one second, all right? It's gonna do its dark frame. 
and then it's gonna start actually stacking the images. You can see here, it got a little bit brighter. So you can kind of do this trial and error to figure out how bright you want the sequence or the, the scene to be. And then we press it one last time and it takes out dark frame at the end. And this is great because this is, this is why I think this feature is so well thought out. It's because we're taking a dark frame at the beginning of the shooting sequence and also at the end of the shooting sequence. The camera's temperature will often change quite dramatically from the beginning of the sequence to the end of the sequence. So taking those two dark frames at both ends allows us to kind of average the temperature of the camera together and really do a much better job at canceling out noise. So kudos to Olympus for really thinking out this feature so well. It's so easy to use and it's the kind of picture that everyone should try to take when they're first starting out. All right, to wrap this up, let me give you a few tips and tricks composition. So typically you kind of want something interesting in the foreground or down the lower half of the image. I haven't really experimented with that too much except for maybe my images at the observatory, but really it's just finding something interesting. A lot of times people like to find castles or maybe old abandoned barns or some road out in the country or maybe some interesting piece of landscape or a rock or something to the fact. Now, airplanes. Airplanes are going to be your Bane when it comes to this type of photography, especially since you're doing such a long image and you can't just pull a few pictures out of the stack. Between one and four o'clock in the morning, that is your golden hour, your best time to do this type of photography, because that's usually when there are the least number of flights in the air. Now, I know getting up that early might be a little bit hard, but hey, if you're dedicated, it's worth it. And I know if, if you're, doing this type of photograph at home, it's fairly easy to just turn on the camera, go to sleep, come back a few hours later, turn it off again. Now, if you live in the city, again, I admonish you, get out there and try this. Even in the city, this works fantastic, and a lot of that has to do with the way that Olympus has designed this to work. And here's an image by my good friend Daniel. He lives in Colombia. He lives in a Bortle 8 white zone. This is a picture he took from his balcony in the city, folks. So yes, in the city, you can do this. Mm -hmm.